Hey, I'm Arcee and this is the episode 26 about creating an HTML5 video game. If you haven't watched the last episode, then I will highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this video, what I'm planning to cover is item management, so everything related with um, inventory. Um, I'm planning to cover advanced movement in another video. So one thing I want to mention before getting started is that, like you may have noticed, I changed the text editor I'm using. So this is Visual Studio Code. You can still use Notepad++, but I personally prefer not, um, Visual Studio Code, and that's um, the software we'll be using um, for the next um, videos. I will put the link in the description if you want to download it. It's free, and uh, just make sure you download Visual Studio Code and not Visual Studio, because there are two um, pretty different softwares. So let's get started with item management. So we already have two files. The first one is um, random stuff about the game, so index.html, and then we have the, our entities file. But the inventory is not an entity. It, it does not have like an x, y, width, height. It, it's entirely separated. So what I'm going to do is create a new file that I will call inventory inside the JS folder, inventory. So there are multiple ways to design inventory. The first and probably the easiest would be um, something like that. So we have a list of items. We have a function called add item, remove item, and as item. Um, so pretty straightforward. The biggest flaw with this um, technique is that everything is in the global is a global variable, um, and um, even though we will probably only have one inventory, if we want to have two inventories then we will not be able to do that. And what I mean by two inventories is, for example, you have the player inventory and you have a bank, which has its own inventory. So if we do something like that with everything in the global um, variable space, it will not work. So the better design would be to do something like this. So we create um, a class inventory that has its own list of item and it has the three function lib with it. And with that way, we'll be able to create multiple inventory. So that's a way better design. So the three main functionalities related with inventory is adding item, removing item, and checking if the player has a specific item. Actually, there's also a fourth one, which will be um, everything related with a rendering, but I I'm gonna cover that um, later. So add an item, so we got our item list, which is a list containing an ID and an amount. So when we add an item, we need to check there are two cases. The first one is that the player already has the the item. In that case, we want to increase the amount of that, the amount of item he owns. And if it does not exist, so if the player does not own that item, then what we will do is that we will create a new entry in the item list. So how it's gonna look like is that we will loop through um, the list of items. And if the item ID matches the ID we want to add, then we will increase the amount by amount. And um, that's it, we will return. Now, if we have managed to loop through all the item without hitting the return, return means leaving the function. So if we manage to reach this line, this means that we the deployer does not own the item yet. So we'll need to add a new entry, something like this. So that's already, that, that's all the code we need for add item. The other part is remove item, and it looks somewhat similar. So we look through all the items. If the player do own the item, then we want to decrement the amount by amount. And if the amount is less or equal to zero, this means the player no longer own the item, so we want to remove it. So to remove from an array, we use the splice. So splice i, this is the index and how many you want to remove. And that's pretty much it. As item, what we do is we loop through all the items, and as soon as we find the item we want, we will return if the amount if the 
amount is greater or equal to the amount we want. And if we look through all the items and we didn't see uh, one that matches the ID, this means the player do not own the item so we can return false. So that's pretty much all we need to have a working inventory system. Now, having item is great, but we will probably want to use them. So for example, if we have a potion and we use the potion, we want a, a function to be called. And uh, for that, I'm going to create another class that I will call item. So an item will have an ID, a name and a event related with it. And uh, basically the ID, the name and the event. Um, and we can solve. So it, it's pretty straightforward. So something we, we could do, for example, is create a new item called potion. The, the name, by the way, is um, what will be displayed on the player. When I will um, start the, the rendering function, name is what will be displayed to the um, player. ID is the internal ID. That's what we store in the um, inventory item list over there. And the event is what we want, like the, the thing to, to do when the player activate the, let's say the potion. So for example, the potion, when the player will activate it, we want to set the HP back to 10, for example. Now, one problem with this is that if the player use the potion, he will keep the potion. So after using the potion, we actually need to do, um, to remove the item. Yeah, I, I'm gonna cover that. <laughs> actually, we, we can do it right away. So, um, cause right now we have created the class inventory, but the player does not have its own inventory. We need to, Kind of like the player. It's kind of like we created the player class, but we haven't done this part over there. So player equal player. So what we need to do is to do something like player inventory equal inventory. Now, if we do that, it will not. You will not be able to run the game because um, every time we add a new file, we also need to precise it in the list of files to load. So at the top over there, you will need to add inventory. There we go. So now that we have a player inventory, when you use the potion, we want to remove item and we want to remove a potion. There we go. Um, now the final part is, and probably the hardest part, one other item I want to add real quick is um, spawning monsters. Spawn enemy. So this is I think enemy randomly. Um, randomly generate. And you will be able to click it multiple times. So Spawning enemy, you can click, 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 and I will not remove the enemy item, quote unquote. Um, so now the, the last part is related with the rendering. So right now, all the rendering is done with the canvas. So over there, we have a canvas, and then we can draw images on it. Um, the thing is for items, everything related with interaction, like clicking text and stuff like that. I would personally not recommend um, using a canvas. Yes, you can like write texts, but if you want to do something um, relatively advanced, you will like, I, I would not personally recommend it. I already covered that a little bit in the multiplayer series, um, but you can like check it out if you want. Like I talk a little bit about how to do user interfaces, like more advanced one. And the technique I would recommend is to make the um, inventory in HTML instead of drawing it on a canvas. Um, it might sound like difficult to do, but um, as you will be able to see pretty soon, it's relatively um, easy and performance wise doing it in HTML will be a lot more performant. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to create a div right below the canvas. So the canvas is where we draw everything, but right underneath it, there will be a div. So a div is a empty container. 
So it's just like a box. And we can add stuff with the box. Um, with there, there are multiple ways to add stuff to the box, but the, the easiest one is with inner HTML, and then you can write text. And um, this text will be displayed inside the, the container. So yeah, if you want more detail about that, you can check out my HTML um, interface video. So where I talk more in detail about how to create um, containers like div and alter their, their properties. But for this video, it's going to be really straightforward. Um, copy paste that. So the goal is to create um, a content. So this is refresh renderer, uh, refresh render. Um, so we need to create that string. And that string, obviously, it will not be um, gibberish. It needs to be the items the player own. So one way to do that would be to just loop through. Basically, it's loop through all the items. And for each of the item, um, no, don't, don't forget that this will give us the item ID. We don't actually have the item name. So the item itself will be item. Oh yeah, well, one thing we forgot is that um, yes, we create the new items, but we don't store them anywhere. We cannot like access access them. Yeah, yes, we could do something like um, potion equal this, and then we can add the potion. But one more convenient way uh, would be to have an actual list list. And then we add it something like this. So now we can access any item by ID by using this um, this con this um, data structure something like this. So this fetch the ID with the ID we check in the list. Hey, does it match something? Yes. We return the the related item. And with that, we have access to the name. So we could do something like strength plus equal item name and with an extra space. So yeah, now that we have the refresh render, we need to actually call it. Otherwise, nothing will happen. So we want to call it when we add a new item. So over here and over there. And when we remove an item. So over here. There we go. So we can test uh, what we have created so far. So right now we don't have any item. We need to actually add them manually. It's kind of bad. But so add item, let's say potion and one. So there we go. We can see potion. Now if we click on it, nothing will happen because right now it's just pure text. It's just loop through all the item, write down the name and that's it. We will need to actually um, do a little bit of HTML coding to make it work. So what we will want to do instead of just writing down the name is that we will want to create a button. And the button will look something like this. Button. BR. So BR is a change line. So they are like one below each other. So with that, we create a button with the name. But when we click on the name, nothing will happen. Another thing I would like to add is a little x information. So, item amount. so this will give us how many items we have. So for example, potion x1 or x2, depending on the actual amount. So it, it will like, yes, it's a button. But when we click on it, the, the browser does not know what function to call. So how, it, how it's done is that we can define a onclick behavior, something like that. And then whatever we put there will be called when we will click on the button. So yeah, we need to use the backslash where we want to include a double quote inside a string. Otherwise, the computer does not know if um, like this is the string or anyway. J just remember, double quote means you need to add a backslash. Um, now, for the, the on click, it gets really um, dirty code. Not sure if I want to get too much into that, but um, it would look something like this. The, the problem is we need to create a string that will be called. 
gonna write it down and try to explain it. But this is like more advanced stuff. Something like that. Um, so basically we get the item and we need to include the single quote and then we call the event. Would, let, let's say that the ID is potion, then it would look something like that. So we call this. So item list potion. There we go. And this we added there. And I think this should work. So yeah, there are cleaner ways to do that with um, like libraries like jQuery. But I, I really don't want to get um, into that. Anyway, let's refresh the page add the item potion and let's say I lose HP and I click on that, it will put me back at 10 HP and it will remove the potion. So exactly what we wanted. So I can add the, um, the item spawn enemy and if I click it, there's going to be lots and lots of monsters. So everything is working as it should, so that's perfect. Now, if it does not work, don't worry, there are ways to um, find out what the problem is. I, I know that this is kind of hard to do and you will probably like not get it the first try. But if you want to debug it, um, what you do is you open the um, developer tools with F12, click that little button, move your mouse over spawn enemy, and you will be able to see exactly what the on click is and check if it's the good one or the bad one. For example, if I forget, like, let's say a, a quote, that's probably the most common mistake. I, I don't put double quotes. When I will click here, it's going to say enemy is not defined. So anyway, th that's probably the easiest way to, to debug the problem. So I guess that will be pretty much it about the video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next video. So.